Okay, I think that given that everyone is here, we are ready to start. Um, I'd like to just kick things off by um, welcoming everyone um, to this continuing professional development webinar that we've put on here today for you. Um, a very warm welcome. It is great to see the number of people that have joined us today. Um, and we hope that you will have a fantastic um, time with us today. Um, I would like to just kick things off with a brief introduction. Um, I am Barbara Orth and I am Membership and Professional Standards Executive here at SIWAM and I'm joined here today by Terry Fuller and um, Darren Eckford today. Um, as a brief introduction, um, Darren has worked in personal and professional development, team dynamics and experiential learning in both New Zealand and the UK for the past 12 years. He comes to SIWEM from a role of facilitating more human organisations, teams and leaders with the Zone Global Consultancy. Darren has been with SIWEM for the past four months and is actually celebrating his four month anniversary today. So happy four month anniversary, Darren. Terry Fuller. <laughs> Wonderful. Terry Fuller is Chief Executive of um, SIWEM um, and he has over 30 years of experience as a water and environmental manager, having provided technical leadership on large scale projects in some of the world's most beautiful and challenging locations. Previously, Terry directed the river and coastal business for Jacobs Engineering and worked with organisations in the environmental, rail, water, field services, coastal and tunnelling sectors in the UK, Asia, Middle East and United States. Before devoting his work full time to SIWEM, Terry was and remains an active member. Terry served the institution on the committee of SIWEM's River and Coastal Group between 2004 and 2011 and was chaired during his 60th anniversary year in 2009. Terry has also served as Board of Trustee. Um, thank you very much both of you for, for, for joining us today and a very warm welcome. Now, to kick, th uh, kick things off, um, I will provide a brief introduction of the topic at hand. Um, so what is CPD and some of SIWEM's requirements, following which we will um, pr proceed to a conversation between Dari and Taryn um, in terms of um, what constitutes as good CPD, um, what is actually CPD, and so, as well as some tips and tricks um, for, for, for how to maintain a good CPD um, record. After um, their, their conversation, we will open the floor to an audience Q&A. You can interact with us privately or openly by sending us your messages um, or by posting in the Q&A um, section. Um, you will have received some joining instructions before the start of the webinar, um, but if you do experience any technical difficulties, then do give us a shout and the host will be able to um, sort that out for you ASAP. Um, I would also like to mention that there will be a poll um, at the end of the webinar. So if you do have two spare minutes, um, we would welcome your feedback um, to hear how we did, as well as what areas we could improve on, as well as some maybe ideas for some future webinars and topics that you would like to um, hear about. Um, so without further ado, um, let's just kick it off with what actually is CPD. So CPD is a range of learning activities through which professionals uh, maintain and develop their skills. Um, if you applied, uh, if you're looking to apply for chartered membership with SIWEM, you will know that we require you to have uh, and present um, uh, 90 hours of CPD record over a three three year rolling period. Um, if you're an existing chartered member with SIWEM and you hold external registrations with the Engineering Council, the Science Council, the Society for the Environment, or you're just simply a chartered member, you will be aware that um, you are um, expected to, to maintain your CPD record as you might be selected for random annual sampling. Um, this of course um, also applies and most of all applies to chartered scientists who are submitted to annual review of their CPD record for revalidation purposes. However, um, CPD is also recommended and it's good to keep a CPD record outside and outside of the spectrum of SIWEM, um, as whether it's for work purposes or, you know, whether you just like to keep track of it. Um, so it's not necessarily just a SIWEM, SIWEM requirement. Um, and I think at this point I'll pass the ball on to Darren uh, and Terry, who will tell us a bit more about why CPD is useful and they will also share, share some tips and tricks um, about what makes good CPD and how to maintain it. 
Thanks very much, Barbara, for the introduction. And yes, what a wonderful four months it's been coming in uh, under a time of crisis response. It's certainly been interesting. Calling on all my CPD for sure. Um, yeah, no. So um, I guess I just, one of the things I want to do uh, on this webinar is just share a little bit of perspective um, around what CPD is, um, why we should do it, and then um, we'll kick over to Terry, who's the godfather of CPD, and we'll uh, check in with him on his experience and and uh, what he's done throughout his career to the point where he's now the CEO of Cywem, a chartered, institu chartered institution. So, um, Babs, if you want to just go to that next slide. Wonderful. Thank you very much. So, um, why keep uh, continuing professional development or CPD record? Well, um, as you can probably tell from my accent, I'm from New Zealand. Um, we're a little bit less stringent on it down there, but equally it's, it's valued pretty highly. Um, and then from the UK context, it's, it's obviously more regulated and, and very important as part of your, your professional development. Um, I kind of look at it uh, as if you were going out to buy a used car, um, you know, and, and believe me, uh, back home, they're a little bit more lenient about what they let on the road than they are over here. So it's, uh, it's very important to assess the vehicle you're buying stringently. Um, so if you think about the, the look at the, the MOT or the registration that you, that makes you think, okay, look, I, I might buy that car. And if, if you're going for a job, if you're looking for employment then people will look at your CV and they'll say, okay, yeah, this looks really nice, really good. Okay. Now, if I'm going to buy a used car, I then ask about the service history. So I want to see how it's been looked after, who's, who's taking care of it, if it's in good, good condition, what the issues have been in the past, what they've tried to develop. And this is the, your CPD. So this is your service history of your career. It's what people can look back on and go, wow, this person's really taking care of their own development. They're obviously committed to their own development. They want to, be, they want to get better. They want to improve. And it's evidence of that. Um, so we've got a, a slide here. Um, and if you look at that, that first kind of block, the, the opportunity to, um, and I kind of look at this section as, as the response to change. So it's um, the impact, the guiding influence of you trying to undertake CPD in this category is, is an extrinsic influence or impact influence. And um, increasingly we're living in a, to, to quote the US Army acronym, a VUCA world, volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous and um, even more so uh, under current circumstances. And we are gonna get thrown changes along the way. So it's important we can be, can be adaptable. And this may be one of the things that motivates you to pursue CPD or the direction it takes you in. So keeping up to date with technological changes. Um, I know before I got um, invited to do this webinar, I definitely watched a webinar on online presentation. <laughs> um, and then um, keeping up with things like legislative change changes as well, which is particularly um, important in the industry that we stand in. Um, the next category there, um, enhance your, um, I've kind of grouped this under sort of intrinsic influence. So your, your, or self-influence. Um, so my skills, my development, it's about building and, and, and drawing on your self-awareness, how you want to grow, how you want to develop your own career. Um, and it, it, it may not just be career. It may be, um, how you build relationships because that qualifies across into your work, work experience. It may be leadership skills, so it doesn't always have to be 100% role specific. And I think that's one of the, the great things about SIOM CB, CPD is potentially when you're going for chairship with us, we're a little bit more lenient in the way we look at it. So we want to see a broad range of CPD. Um, and and I think from my personal perspective, I, I think that's, that's really important as well because it helps you draw on learnings from other industries um, and going back to that VUCA world having that breadth of experience and not just depth, I think is, is really important. Um, so enhancing your own knowledge or understanding, your own skill and aptitude, or your own breadth of experience um, along with your depth. Um, the next category there um, in order to, um, I've kind of grouped this as your, your inspiration influence. So where do you want to be? What's the inspiring result you want from your CPD? Where are you trying to go in your career or in your life? So it's about future me. Um, and what do I need to do to get there? So 
you almost put a line in the sand and say, that's my next step. That's where I need to get to. And what level, what type of CPD do I need to do to get there? Um, and, uh, and I think, you know, the, those things, they're responding to a specific need. So if there's a certain role you want to go to or a certain um, item in your career that, that keeps cropping up, then what's that specific need? Um, preparing, preparing for a specific role change, um, following a particular career plan, or improving on a personal weakness or your competence. Um, so, with that in mind, um, what we're going to do? We've got we've got a few pre pre prepared questions here, um, where we're going to throw them over to uh, to Terry and ask him to answer from his perspective. Um, so, Terry, welcome along. I'm going to ask you these questions, and uh, we can uh, maybe have a wee discussion around the uh, responses. So. From your perspective and experience, firstly, what constitutes as CPD? Well, I think for me, I, I always refer back to the uh, CIWEMS uh, template for completing uh, CPD. Um, and I use that really to generate um, sort of questions and tests for what I what I'm doing and to determine whether or not it might actually constitute um, CPD. So the, the the main aspects of that are that um, first of all you need to be able to demonstrate what the key attributes are of, of the particular activity. Um, secondly you need to be able to um, identify what the key learning points were from the activity that you did and and finally you need to be able to um, articulate how you might apply those learnings in in the future so i use those three things as a, as a test really and i ask myself if what i'm doing at the moment does it would i be able to actually answer those three questions if so then the chances are it's it constitutes um cpd um, and I think for me, it, it's really important not to undervalue the activities that we all undertake as part of our day-to-day uh, -day working. Um, this is continuing professional development. It's not additional uh, professional development necessarily. So I think to value what you are actually doing in your day job and uh, be able to tease out of that the things that you're learning and the things that are applicable and help you to develop and grow is really important. Um, but also it is important to seek out a nice blend of um, experiences outside your day job. And I think that's really important because for me, part of the value of CPD is that it enables you to, to broaden your capabilities. It enables you to broaden your thinking. And certainly in my case, it enabled me to take my career into a, a direction which I'm certain would not have been possible if I hadn't actually been paying attention to some structured CPD over the years. Really good insights those Terry and I think the point about diving deeper in what you're doing day to day and recognizing and, and appreciating that as continued professional, uh, professional development as well is really important. Um, so how has, how has CPD supported you through your career then? Um, you, you said it took you in directions you might not have necessarily gone and how has it supported in that way? Well, I mean, I'd, I'd be quite sort of fundamental about this, really, in saying that I, I think it's been absolutely career defining for me. It, it's not just something that was 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 sort of mildly helpful. It, it's absolutely enabled me to get to where I am right now. Um, and I may not necessarily realise that at the time, um, but I say that because for a start, it, it drove me towards engaging um, very sort of positively and thoroughly with with CIWEM and that could be a, another professional institution but in my case it was CIWEM because it so well described my ambitions and interests but it caused me then to to become actively involved in the professional institution and through that I was my mind was opened up to to a much broader range of, of possibilities and ideas and things that um I might not otherwise have realized if I just sort of stuck to my um, to my day job. So that's why I say it's career defining, because when I look back, um, I, I don't think at any point in my early career did I think I would end up in, in say, a business leadership role, having started off as a, as a, a civil engineer. Um, 
and it's really the breadth of experiences that I gained through CPD, the structure it gave, the gap analysis I was able to do, the, the, the fact I could see that there were things that um, skills that I was perhaps uh, missing in my um, armament and um, it helped me to, to fill those. And so when I did eventually decide I wanted to take a slightly different career direction, I looked back on my experiences and my skills and my attributes and, and found that I had a much wider range of opportunities available to me than perhaps I, I would have otherwise had. So I would say it's, it's that, that fundamental for me. That's, uh, thanks for that, Terry. And I think you talked about looking back and reflecting. And the next question is, you know, around reflection and how it's a key part of the, the CPD process for chartered members. And it's not just during the application, but but ongoing um, once you've achieved chartership, um, how you and how have you approached this throughout your career? And and I guess the, the carry on question from that is is do you have any tips on ensuring that you learn from the activities you undertake? Yeah, I, uh, thank you, Darren. Well, I think I mean for a start, and and I suspect others might also recognise this. I just don't leave enough time in my diary or my my life necessarily for reflection and thinking time. Um, it's something I'm trying to uh, do more of, but um, typically I'm just into the the, the day to day. Um, doing of things and, and I don't leave enough time for reflection and um, taking time out for CPD activities has been very helpful. Um, and if I'm really honest, sometimes um, I might be at a conference that is a CPD activity and my mind might wander a bit away from the, the, the speaker or a particular topic because just being there has triggered a thought and um, allowed me to perhaps process and think about some things that I hadn't otherwise found time to do. So um, although it isn't necessarily a great endorsement of the person I might be listening to, I, I think actually that's quite a valuable part of CPD in a way that, um, you know, you, you, you are at least taking some time out to think and reflect generally on where you're at. Um, I think as well, it's that reflection. I found it helps to recalibrate me a little bit um, and also to sort of regather my, my energy levels for, for what, um, what I need, need to do. Um, just that ability to better break out and apply your mind to different things. Um, and I certainly don't think any, any CPD time uh, spent is actually wasted in any, any way. Um, ideally, you would want to have a plan and you want to be able to assess that the CPD you're proposing to undertake is going to be valuable to you because your time is, is precious. But occasionally there are times when perhaps it doesn't quite meet expectations, but um, it's still been very valuable in terms of providing that reflection time. Mm. I, I really like that Terry. And I think talking about reflection as well, it, it gives you that opportunity to look at it from a slightly different perspective as well. And you may actually get something out of that that you hadn't planned to, um, which I think is really important. Yeah, that's that's nearly always the case, actually. There's nearly always something that that, uh, that occurs that you hadn't anticipated. Excellent. Um, so we spoke a little bit earlier about how um, SIWIM kind of encourages a broader remit to, to your CPD. Um, we're certainly not prescriptive about the approach that you choose to take towards your CPD. Mm -hmm. um, it, can, it can range from sort of formal learning to doing a course, informal learning, like networking with colleagues and on the job learning. Um, what, is, what is important is how you identify your CPD needs or reflect on your CPD and apply it in practice for impact within your organization especially, I guess, now we spoke about the VUCA world and this current period of, of social distancing. Um, some traditional CPD routes may be slightly less available, um, so we need to get a little bit creative about how we initiate and instigate. Um, are there any like, innovative activities that you've undertaken that you'd like to share or that you've seen that, that may be of use to people? Yes, thank you. Well, I, I, for, for a start, I think the current situation we find ourselves in is actually um, helpful in that I think it's pushing us towards finding much more accessible forms of, of CPD and to think about how a bit more widely about how we might continue to develop ourselves. 
And the obvious example, of course, is technology just like this one in that with webinars, et cetera, um, we're able to provide opportunities that are um, easier to perhaps to access. Um, we can alter the times of day that, that things are um, available so we can better match people's home and work balances. Um, and by obviously recording things as well, that's that's very helpful for people to be able to access things on demand. So I think we were heading in that direction to provide those sorts of services to our members. The current situation just accelerated that. And I think it's it's been helpful in that regard. Um, I think as well, I'm, I find myself looking at other, other forms of um, information. Um, I'm reading perhaps more about things at the moment and I'm writing more as well. I find myself moved to want to, to write blogs and contribute to, to our publications and, and things, all of which are a CPD. But I think the other thing is the current situation, I, I think as a profession, it's a really um, good reminder of some of the significant challenges that we face globally um, and that, that we as professionals have got a major part to play in, in realizing those challenges. So perhaps it's a good time again to reflect on, on current skills and interests and look at perhaps what the world might, might need over the coming sort of decade or so, um, what we can learn out of the current situation and use that to plot some, um, some CPD activities um, to suit. In terms of innovations, um, I mean, for me, I think it's really important, it occurs to me, it's really important to be part of the conversation. So what I mean about that is we've, we've got some big issues that we're having to, to cope with at the, at the moment. And there's all sorts of conversations going on, whether it's on social media um, or um, through um, publications and exchanges, um, through sort of letters, that kind of thing. Um, and I think, you know, currently it's th these challenges for me, it's creating a desire to, to actually know more. And I think being involved in the conversation creates that desire. So I would say find whatever media works for you, but be present and be part of contemporary conversation. Um, and I think it, as well, the there is a slight downside as well, of course, to this this very virtual environment we find ourselves in. Um, thrust into at the, at the moment and, and I talk to people who miss obviously the face-to-face -face, um, contact and particularly with events um, missing the casual conversations and the face time that you have during the coffee breaks and the ability to seek people out and, and uh, explore ideas with them and, and meet etc um, and whereas of course we hope we're going to get back to um, uh, being able to meet more face-to-face I still think we need to find, we need to innovate and find ways of making these platforms work for us in that way. So I think the way that we use this technology, we could innovate a bit with it and um, allow chats to be able to, to take place, perhaps informally. Um, and I think the, um, the private chat buttons that we have, the facility we have on this, this platform enables you to reach out to other people that you know are present in these environments and perhaps connect that way and maybe arrange to have a follow-up conversation after the, the webinar is finished, that kind of thing. So I think there is much more we can do with this technology to, to replicate um, some of the things we might miss from having face-to-face um, um, -face, uh, meetings. Thanks, Terry. I, I really like the concept of being part of the conversation you introduced there. Um, we all have the potential or capacity to take ownership of our CPD in these, and certainly under these circumstances, a lot of us are home. Uh, a lot of us are forced out of work through, you know, the furlough scheme where we're not we're not able to complete our, our um, regular job roles. And so it's a, it's a fantastic time to be considering uh, what we can be doing with regards to CPD. Um, and by being part of the conversation, you can take ownership. You can ask, you know, most professional institutes, us included, we are uh, converting a lot of our training to online. Um, and if you have a specific CPD need, don't be afraid to go out and ask for it and source it because um, most organizations at this point are being very flexible and trying to make 
it work for everyone. So that innovation and adaptation, as Terry spoke about, it's, um, it's hugely important. So you're, you're complete within your rights to take some ownership of that. Um, I guess the, the, the flip side, Terry, is that not all CPD may turn out to be completely valuable um, when you undertake it. Um, but it, it may still, as you alluded to before, provide time or opportunity for reflection. Do you have any further thoughts on this? Well, yeah, I think, as I said, in my experience, um, I've, I've never found any CPD activity a complete waste of time. It might have disappointed on occasion, but never a complete waste of time. And I, I, you know, and I do believe in the old adage, you get out of things what you put into them. So I, I think, you know, it, as you're receiving information the onus is on you to then do something with that to either go and find out more or to work out ways to to um, apply what you've um what you've learned um but really the secret to this is in the planning and you know we get asked questions about how important it is to have a, a cpd plan and to be thoughtful and to look ahead and to analyze the gaps in your um, skill sets etc that is so important and of course the, the more you can get that right the more you're the less likely you are to to undertake something which is, is a waste of time so I think it's a real testimony to to good sort of forethought and planning yeah really good um, and you, you've kind of alluded to this one already as well but perhaps an opportunity to expand on it um, have you made use of a professional development plan to support your CPD? Yes, I, I do. Um, I mean, like, like everybody, it probably ebbs and wanes a little bit with uh, other sort of pressures, but when it's worked best for me is when it has been structured. And I think for me, the really key message here is to not see that plan as additive to the other planning that, you, that we're all required to do as part of our careers. So we will typically have staff appraisals um, with our employers, for example, and our employers will have internal uh, training requirements and development requirements and opportunities. And all these things can be integrated. You know, to, to think of, of, uh, of CPD requirements as set out by SIWEM or any other professional institution or by the licensed bodies uh, as being additive to what what you're doing generally to plan your career is completely complete um misinterpretation i would say um so have one plan and you know integrate those things together um make sure you have a mentor i think a mentor is really important for your planning because it gives you the discipline and the opportunity to sit down with somebody and discuss those plans and i've mentioned a couple of times or gap analysis and I think chatting through your plans with, with a, um, a third party is really helpful in being able to point out and identify what those gaps are. And of course, the other thing is having some idea of where you'd like to go as well in direction, because that then helps you to map, map the gaps. Um, so that would be my sort of tips really for, for A, have a plan definitely, um, and, um, and make sure it's as integrated as possible with everything else that, that you're having to do. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Planning is paramount. And I think also you spoke about getting, having a mentor and um, important to understand that mentoring is, you know, having someone around who asks you the right questions, not necessarily gives you all the answers because um, it's important that as you take that journey, you, uh, you understand how you've got there and the steps you've taken along the way. So a mentor will question you and, and, and help you pick the right direction rather than telling you where to go. Um, certainly it's great to ask for advice, but, um, but you need both of those in, in, in my opinion. And if I might just add Darren there, that, that um, the important point here is that, um, that CPD planning and mentor, having a mentor is a career long um, thing. As far as I'm concerned, it's not something that you just have in the lead up to sitting your chartership exams and that kind of thing. I have a mentor now and I absolutely believe in the value of that, of having somebody or some bodies that I can go to, to seek that uh, career guidance and, and um, sort of third party view, if you like. So it, it definitely is a career wide thing. Fantastic. Awesome. Thanks for that, Terry. And folks, I'm sure that we're going to have a load of questions for, uh, for Terry and we'll throw over to Barbara shortly 
uh, to run the, the, the Q&A. Um, we do have a few that were just sent through earlier here. So I'll just, I'll just read those off for Terry to, uh, to come back on very quickly. Um, one here, I'm already required to do CPD for other purposes. Do I have to do something different for Cywim? Yeah, I think I've hopefully just covered that in in that that last question. That the answer is definitely definitely not to that. Um, yeah, and I'm really quite passionate about this because I hear this a lot. I've heard it a lot over over the years. Um, no, we. I would sort of point you back to the the three um, criteria that we're we're looking to um, sit to see when we uh, assess CPD and. Um, providing the activity enables you to sort of meet those criteria then it's valid cpd for cywem as much as it is for any other purposes excellent um the next one i, I feel like you've answered already can work-based learning count towards my cpd but mm. potentially it, it, you could expand in, on that and, and maybe some tips on on how you can record that Yes, I, well, again, at risk of bits sort of being repetitive, I think you apply those same three tests that I talk about to what you're doing in a, in a work situation to see whether or not it is actually something which you can identify learning around, something which you can actually um, apply to your job going forward, and something which you can actually see a future um, use for. Um, and as I said, I think it is important to have a blend between things that are um, completely out with your your day-to-day -day work as well as things that you are uh, gaining um, through your your work but not to undervalue that at all um, and I suppose my tip there would be um, don't think so much about skills and um, and uh, ability to do specific things think about the qualities that a particular activity is giving to you so if, for example, it's enabling you to um, uh, interact and communicate more effectively um, as, a, as a general rule. So you might be chairing a meeting or you might be um, giving a presentation to a client, for example. If you really feel those activities are honing your particular skills and, and qualities to be a good presenter, and, uh, um, then I would suggest there is value in that, which could actually be identified as being an hour or two of, of, um, of CPD to put into your record. Excellent. Um, last one I've got here before throwing back to Barbara is, uh, what happens if I'm unable to do CPD for, you know, long career break or long-term illness, maternity leave, these type of scenarios? I was so hoping I would get asked that question because I've, I've given this a lot of thought and, and I get challenged on this a lot as well as I go around and, and talk to people. Um, and I think it's really important that we start to think far more creatively about um, periods of people's careers where they're on a break. Uh, and that can be for a number of reasons. Um, the reason that often crops up and I often get asked about is a maternity uh, break or potentially paternity um, break. Um, but it could be for any other sorts of reasons. Um, my response to this would be that, that first of all, let's remember we, we require a 90 hour rolling average over three years here as the, um, the target to, to meet. And so, you know, it is possible to take a bit of a holiday, if you like, in, in, in that for a period of time. Um, but if I can perhaps just share with you some um, reflections and feedback I've had from listening to um, female colleagues who have been on maternity um, break. I've heard people describe to me um, how that period away from work can be really quite difficult in terms of maintaining one's confidence and feelings of being in touch with the profession and with the company that perhaps you, um, you work for. And people describe to me how there's a bit of a crisis of confidence as to whether or not it's going to be possible to return to work. Um, and that, that's where I think being able to maintain some degree of CPD during say maternity break or indeed any other sort of career break is really valuable actually. And it doesn't have to be 30 hours. It could be six hours or, or, you know, any other sort of any other um, variation on that. But I think whatever the purpose of your break is, 
it will be possible to maintain some degree of CPD. So I'd discourage anyone from taking a complete absence from it and to think about how you can still find time to undertake experiences which, which are, are valuable um, as, as CPD. Um, and also, of course, depending on what the nature of the break is, there may well be experiences you're naturally gaining through that break, which are in themselves valuable career development uh, experiences. So if you're traveling, if you've gone to do something completely different, if you're taking time out to reflect and to write or what have you, these are all things actually, which although you might see them as being quite distinct from your actual job, they, are, they have potential value um, as CPD. So that's my really strong message to people um, to um, just still find that opportunity to um, recognize what learning you're, you're uh, having regardless of, of, of what you're actually doing. Excellent. Thanks, Terry. And I guess I can I can bring your attention, those watching, to the bullet points on the screen there too, in terms of planning and getting the most out of your CPD. So when you're recording it, um, you know, ideally there'll be those four bullet points. I'm sure that you've had a quick read of those whilst Terry's been uh, going through those, those inputs. So, um, Barbara, over to you for the Q&A. Thank you very much. Um, excellent stuff um, from both of you. Um, we've had a lot, loads of questions rolling in, actually, which is great to see. Some of which you've already answered, um, Terry, and some of which cluster around the same topic. Um, so having had a quick look, look through them, one of the key questions was, what's the best way to find a mentor and what attributes should you look for in a mentor? Right, that's a, that's a great question because it is, <clears throat> excuse me, it's so important to get that relationship right. I think you need to think about it as a relationship rather than a, a procedural type of um, a, arrangement. Um, I mean, for a start, being a, a member of a professional institution like SIWEN can be incredibly helpful to you to find a mentor. Um, we are very shortly about to launch an IT platform um, which allows people who are seeking a mentor to to advertise that that um, requirement and for those people in our membership who are willing to be mentors to put themselves forward um, so it's a bit of a dating agency if you will where we can make those connections and I'm very excited about that because I think that's really going to help um, but notwithstanding the IT platform um, if you are engaged in the institution in in any ways you will actually broaden the amount of people that you meet and um, increase the opportunity to identify people who um, you, know, you might want to um, uh, to be a mentor for you for, for a time. Um, there's that. Um, I think though, as I say, it is a relationship and it's really important that um, it works for you personally. So whereas somebody might be able to suggest a mentor to you, my advice would be to meet that person and have a coffee with them and, you know, just try and explore a bit and understand whether or not you think that would be, um, that, that would be the right sort of fit. And the final thing I would say is don't think about this over uh, as being something that necessarily lasts for a great length of time. Um, I have found that my sort of mentor relationships, um, sometimes there might be sort of three months or six months um, by agreement. Um, and because that kind of it runs its course or because it meets a particular need at a particular point in your career. So it's not a decision you're taking for, you know, the, the long term. I think, um, you know, it can, uh, you can have more than one mentor, multiple mentors, either at the same time or over time. Um, and also, of course, if it's not working, um, be able to, to say, be honest uh, uh, on from both points of view, the mentor and the mentee to say, I don't think this is quite working and you know, we, should, we should end it. And if you found the right sort of person with at least the right aptitude, that won't be a difficult conversation to have. I think a, a, a bit of perspective from the, from the training department here as well is that, you know, that, that mentor matching program, platform that's going live next week I think it is is um is going to be a really beneficial for our members but also for our mentors because we actually run mentor training within SIWEM and um giving them a place to sort of go forward and and put their name out there and what they do in their experience 
um, is really important because often it can take you years to find someone to mentor or to find a men to find a mentor yourself. And I think the relationship point that Terry made is really, really important. The key component of a mentor relationship is trust. You've got to trust that that person is going to use their experience to help ask you the right questions to find your own path. Um, Sometimes mentoring gets confused with coaching and coaching is different. Coaching is where you give your ideas, your experience and try and help them develop in that regard. It's, it's, a, it's a transaction, it's, a, it's information transmission. Whereas mentoring, it's more about coercing, coaxing the ideas out of the mentee and helping them find their own path and encouraging their learning. So just really important to, to make that distinction when you are you know, meeting your mentor, your potential mentor and creating that relationship. Excellent, fantastic stuff. Um, we've had a couple more questions rolling in while you were answering um, those questions. I will just merge two questions into one here because they seem to be revolving um, around the same topic, um, which is, can you recommend resources for finding CPD opportunities? Hmm. Uh, the Cyberworm website is a very good go-to <laughs> place. Now I would say that, wouldn't I? But you know, we work very hard to put content and structure into our website for it to be um, exactly that. And there are a number of resources within the website, whether they're in our policy section around all of the very contemporary thought pieces and uh, analysis and guidance and practice notes around um, current practices and, and, and policy. That's a really good place to, to go. Um, there's our publications, of course, with the, um, the uh, tech, highly technical journals, um, but also the Environment magazine, which our, our members receive. Um, they in themselves, it in itself is a, a really good resource, but also within there, you'll find pointers and um, references to other places to go as well, perhaps through the, the web um, and elsewhere. So that, that to me, for me, would be a really good um, starting point. Um, clearly, we have our training portfolio as well, which, um, is again you can see that on the website and that that gives you a very um sort of clear idea of, of particular um fields and um particular types of training which are available from us um along with the events as well so i i think that's a really good sort of go-to resource personally um but i think as well going back to having a, a mentor that um and, and indeed other people within your network that you talk to um that for me over the years has suggested things and places I should go to look for, for information and um, experiences. Um, so I would sort of point towards, I suppose that Rick primarily. As, as an add to what Terry's just said as well, is most professional institutions, and I don't want to speak for all of them, but certainly in our instance, one of our overarching goals is to help people develop through the membership grades. So, invariably we need to provide development opportunities for our members and for you know our, our industry at large so um things like training cpd uh our events you know we've got a big event in december called flood and coast which can contribute to cpd as well all these things are designed around not just current affairs or common themes but actually being able to help our members develop and grow uh, in their roles and and as people um, so really important to, to just note that. And the other thing that we spoke about earlier about taking ownership of your CPD, if you're sitting there waiting for CPD opportunities to come along, well, then it's difficult. They don't just jump on your plate. But if you're actually, you know, working to a plan, like Terry said, and using that as your guiding light or your beacon, um, then you can actually go out and ask for CPD opportunities people within your 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 um, company may have ideas about where you can go um, and equally your mentors like Terry said or ask your professional institution what should I do to get CPD in this area and they'll more than likely have a, a very good answer for you. And if I could just perhaps quickly add something there as well I think quite often we think of CPD as a, as a receiving thing actually CPD can be a giving thing so if you're giving a presentation at a conference like Flood and Coast, for example, um, the research you would have to do to be able to pull that presentation together and the whole experience of giving that presentation is CPD. Similarly with writing uh, a piece in our magazine, for example, 
Um, and so when you get to that point of how are you going to apply the learnings and how you're going to consolidate the learnings from a piece of CPD, sharing it in some fashion, giving that information out is as valuable a learning experience and as valid a CPD exercise in itself as actually receiving information. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, we've got a very good question here that, that we don't often hear, which is, do you need a certificate to substantiate the majority of CPD entries in your record? I'm going to tie this question in with another one, um, which reads, do I need to provide evidence, um, wh whether it's documents or, as you know, uh, one of the panel um, participants mentioned, um, um, a certificate to prove the CPD activity undertaken? Yes. Yeah. That's a good question, isn't it? Um, the answer is no, I would suggest. Um, I mean, people do, I know, like the, the clarity and the surety of being able to have a certificate that's got three hours printed on it and, and what have you, but it isn't actually a requirement at all. Because um, at the end of the day, this, the whole reason that we encourage people to do CPD is for their own benefit and to maintain currency in your career and all the things we've talked about on this webinar. So to claim a piece of CPD that actually is worth this ultimately just cheats the, the, the individual. Um, and so, you know, we very much uh, work on the basis that we're dealing with professional people who can make good judgments about the value of what they're doing. And we just ask you to record that. Um, but clearly in the way you record it, and I've, I've mentioned the, um, the online CPD record that we have in the MySiWEM space, it leads you into having to respond to certain questions, which will almost certainly tease out whether something is valid CPD or, or not. So I think just be realistic and pragmatic about it. Um, if you do have a certificate of some sort, then of course, keep that on your record. That would be a very wise thing to do, but um, we don't look for that um, to do as, as proof or evidence, if you like, for all of the, um, the 30 hours in the year. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely. Um, one of the questions here was whether these slides and the webinar will be made available. Yes. So if you do feel like you've missed anything or whether you would like to listen in again, um, the, the, this webinar will be made available on our website shortly. Um, so fear not if you feel like you've missed anything. Um, and also, if you feel like you've, you know, you, 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 uh, you, you remember a question that you forgot to send in, please do email membership at SIWEM.org and we will be able to answer any queries that you may have. I'm just very aware of the time, so I'm just, I, I think I'm going to include a couple more questions <laughs> because this is a topic that I feel like we could talk about, you know, till the cows come home. Um, but unfortunately, <laughs> we're under time constraints. Um, so, yeah, I, just a couple more questions that we have time for. Um, one of them is, uh, can we include learning in our C CIWEM CPD record that is not directly related to environment or water topics, for example, project or contract management? Oh gosh, my, most definitely my answer to that. Uh, absolutely, yeah. Um, because, you, you, I mean, it, 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 the experiences you need to um, to carry out your responsibilities in the water and environmental profession include a very broad range of, of, um, of attributes, including contracts and, um, you know, I, I think as a, as a civil engineer, for example, I, I was perhaps often sort of challenge myself around the validity of of really sort of hard engineering things that i was perhaps engaged with and uh, and how that fits in the environment well it absolutely does um for all, perhaps all sorts of reasons that are beyond the scope of this webinar but um i think if it's a value to you in your career development and growth and to enable you to actually um fulfill your current responsibilities and you're working in the water environmental sector then it is valid Fantastic. Um, I'll cluster in a couple more questions into one. Um, do we need to use the SIWEM template that is available to maintain our CPD record or can we use our own? Uh, I'm sure you can answer that, Barbara. I think the answer is no, isn't it? Um, <laughs> no, it's not. No, just, it, it's, yeah. there, it's there for, um, for guidance and to help you, but um, providing you've got a clear record and you can submit that, then it can be in any form, can't it? Mm -hmm. 
absolutely. Um, and also just, I think I would like to highlight another key point. It doesn't matter what format is in, as long as we have the items of, you know, what, what type of CPD you've undertaken, um, what the reflection is and what the benefit of the CPD, as well as any kind of future planning of, of more CPD development. Those are kind of like the key areas that we're looking for um, being highlighted in the, in the record. Um, I think we've got, I'm going to uh, slip in another question there because this is all very interesting. Um, so uh, someone is asking, do conferences and webinars count as CPD? Well, yes, I suppose it's a simple <laughs> answer, isn't it? I mean, the, the, the more detailed answer is it would depend on the, the content and the nature of it. But um, potentially webinars and conferences are an excellent um, source of CPD because of, as I said earlier, you've got the opportunity to be able to, to give out as well as receive information. Um, it's they're good periods for reflection. Uh, you get exposed to perhaps a, a, a breadth of thinking and, and get to perhaps meet um, people as well and expand your network. So they typically are a very rich source of, of CPD, yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, yes, and one of the questions, um, a frequent question here was whether it needs to be, so that we mentioned that it needs to be 90 hours over three years rolling and whether that needs to be specific, you know, 30 hours to one year, 30 hours to a, another year. And the answer to that is no. So it can be on a rolling basis as long as you have 90 hours over three years. It really doesn't matter whether it's 30 hours, you know, per, per year. I think that is um, accurate to say, wouldn't you? I would absolutely agree with that. I mean, it's back to the sort of career break question earlier, isn't it? And how it's okay to take a bit of a, a period of um, less activity. Um, the more you can spread it, the better, though. I, I think if you had two years of nothing and 90 um, hours of uh, in the final year, we might sort of question as to whether or not you're, you're really actually structuring and um, you, you know paying attention to your career in the, in the most constructive manner. Um, so I think there's a balance need to be sort of sensible about it, really. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, I think at this point, just being very aware of the time, I will draw the uh, Q&A session to a close. Thank you very much to all of you who've sent in your questions. And yeah, we're very sorry if we weren't able to or run out of time to answer your, 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 your question. Please do um, email us or call us um, and someone will be available um, to help you with, with your question. Um, thank you also for, to, to Terry and, and Darren for joining us and for providing this very insightful um, webinar. Are there any sort of closing statements that you'd like to make, any conclusions or thoughts to take away? Um, I would just say, I mean, the two things that I, I think are probably the most defining of importance for me are um, have a plan and work to it and make sure you have a mentor at any point in your career, those would be my closing remarks. And mine would just be, be proactive. Um, if you wait for CPD to come along, then some of those bad CPD experiences probably be more common than the positive ones because you're just going along to get your numbers up as, this, as, this, as the, uh, the phrase may go. Um, be, be proactive, find the CPD opportunities that you want and that relate to you and are related to your long-term plan, and then you'll enjoy them and you'll make sure you get something out of them. Fantastic. Absolutely. Thank you very much. I think on that note, we will draw this webinar to a close. Thank you indeed uh, for everyone um, to, who joined us today. We hope you enjoyed uh, listening in. And as I mentioned, there will be a quick poll at the end of the webinar. Um, you know, if you do uh, have two minutes to spare, then please complete it. So just we know what to what what kind of you know needs uh, our, our listeners have for, for future webinars. Um, thank you very much. And um, yeah, have a have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Bye all, thank you. Bye.